As far as I know, it's the first time in Canadian history that a journalist uh, that that's happened to a journalist. So, my constitutional rights uh, were infringed upon by Nalcor Energy. Uh, I was doing my job as a journalist in there. I was telling important stories that nobody else was able to tell, stories that I believe Nalcor didn't want told, uh, and potentially other parties. I don't know. Uh, politicians were silent on the matter, and now Newfoundland and Labrador may be the first uh, province where a journalist is hauled off the job like that by the Supreme Court. So. I don't know what else to say at this point, but I can't do my job anymore. I had to make a decision that was in the best interests of myself as an individual, my family, and also the people who I was uh, reporting on in there. And uh, I may, I'm, I'm in a better position to continue to tell their story from outside the gates than I am in a prison cell. And uh, I, I sought legal advice. And uh, as an independent journalist, I, I, they, I was put in a position where I was forced off the job and uh, unable to continue contributing the way that I was. So what's next? Uh, I'm going to maintain contact with the people on the inside who I got to know over the last four days, the land protectors, and I'm going to continue to tell their story from the outside. What's the mood like in there? Uh, well, they just had a ceremony for me as I was leaving, which I wasn't expecting. Uh, the whole thing has been unexpected. My feet have been soaking wet for four days. I didn't know I was going through those gates uh, when, when they went through on four days ago. And um, the, the mood in there right now is uh, they feel vulnerable. Uh, because they know that people aren't watching them anymore. I've encouraged them to use social media as much as possible. There's a lot of police officers in there right now, uh, confirmed by several sources on the on site. And uh, I believe that uh, you know over the last few days, listening in and speaking to some RCMP myself, listening in on conversations between elders and RCMP, it, it, it seems to me that the RCMP's number one priority was to get me out of there so they could get those people out there. These 50 people are challenging a $12 billion project. I don't know uh, I don't know if there's ever been an instance in the history of our country where they've been able to occupy a site like that, fighting for their indigenous rights, their human rights, their right to uh, continue to harvest their traditional foods, and the right to continue to practice a, a traditional uh, way of life. Do you think more people will come out now? Coming out? Yeah. Uh, there was no indication by anybody I spoke with that they're planning on coming out. They are awaiting the police. They don't know when the police are arriving. They don't know how heavy-handed the arrests are going to be. There are elders in there. There are youth in there. Uh, there are people uh, who are still awaiting medication through, to come through to them through the gate. Uh, nobody knows, but I've encouraged them to keep their cell phones charged and their, uh, and their ability to, to film what's happening. Is there any kind of tension between workers and people occupying? There wasn't. Uh, probably, I, I could say, probably 99.5% of the time there wasn't. There were a few times where buses were delayed going out uh, because of the occupation. Uh, and, of course, at those moments, uh, the uh, the people, the, the land protectors were saying, let everybody out, let everybody out. And, and they feel like there was a decision made, perhaps an executive decision, either at NALCOR or at the RCMP, to try to manufacture some kind of tension to, uh, to justify arrests by the RCMP. That's the feeling that a lot of people in there had. Uh, there was quite the opposite. Uh, I, I, I have on film the moment that they went into the building and uh, Kirk Lethbridge, uh, spoke up right away because all the workers are standing around the lobby looking at them and Kirk Lethbridge spoke up and he 